Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new Talking Hands video. If you are familiar with the channel, you will probably recognize this area as my electronics workbench. So let's dive right into it. Here it is. I bought a couple of soldering kits. I built a couple. It's kind of my hobby and I like working in the evening hours, making fun little stuff with a lot of lights and sounds and all whatnot. Um, this here is something that I've built before. This is a spectrum analyzer, you know, that makes us dancing audiographs that you probably have seen on 1980s audio equipment. I have built one before and when my little nephew visitor, visited our house, I showed it to him. He uh, was, well, really happy with it and he played with it all the time. Anyway, I want to build one specially for him, so I ordered another one from AliExpress. Uh, I have very good experiences with the soldering kits from China. They are great quality. Uh, sometimes the building instructions aren't entirely clear, so you have to be somewhat of an advanced uh, electronics builder. If you're a beginner, it can be a bit confusing. But in my experience, they are very yeah easy to build and um, online, especially on YouTube, you will find a lot of building instructions. So let open up the bag and see what's inside. I kind of forgot what the kit looks like before building. So here we have a package with all the components. It contains a lot of LEDs. I have three bags with colored LEDs, green, blue and red. Some building instructions and this came it's outside the package these are the english building instructions so shows you which order to build it and here is an overview of components and the markings on here are let me see or let me pull it out are also on a circuit board i hope that makes building a bit easier everything is silk screened on there it's probably tiny and if i can get can get rid of the glare can probably see that there are a lot of markers. Each and every component is marked and also the value of the resistors and the capacitors is on there. So that's good. That's what I mean with good quality uh, kits. There's a power cable and a whole bunch of components. Now what's important to check and that's something that's yeah telling about the quality is um, well, the leads on the ICs over here, I always check if they are straight. If they're not, they uh, weren't carefully packed or carefully transported. But all of these are straight, so that's good. And I'll have a quick look at the smaller IC, same here. And really important are the, yeah, these are the slots. I'm not sure how you would call this, but this is where you insert the ICs into. This is what's so, uh, soldered to the circuit board and all those. These legs are a bit thinner usually, but they are all straight. Let's have a look at the resistors. And unfortunately, they are not marked every now and then. You have a little bit of writing on the hair, so it says the value. But you can also read the color bands. I have this little, this plastified thing over here that um, tells the value of the colors. And I'm starting to learn this. I can do it from the top of my head. I lack experience. But anyway, they are not marked and otherwise I can always measure it with my bandstop multimeter. So there's a whole bunch of resistors and two separate ones. Not sure if they fell out, but we'll find out. A single uh, electrolytic capacitor, a bunch five in total ceramic capacitors. There's a little trim pot that looks a little bit flimsy. You have to be careful with this one button and yeah most important this is the microphone so the spectrum analyzer doesn't have an aux input or any RCA jacks it just picks up the surround noises and it works with a simple microphone and one lead is a little bit bent but that's not bad and here is the USB this is the B micro uh, connector for the power supply so we can get started straight away. Um, I will film this in a time lapse. So, uh, well, me soldering all those little LEDs. How much do we have? There are, you can see it, there are 44 of each color. So that means a lot of soldering. So I'll do that in a time lapse. Um, I know from the previous one that I built that it's quite time consuming. So I'll try to speed this up and put a little fun music on there. Oh yeah, and also there's an acrylic housing. You can put it well, on your sound system or on a speaker. So I'm going to organize my bands and then we'll start soldering. I use my 
little UA soldering station have it set to 350 degrees Celsius. I like to use this knife blade soldering tip, it's real nice. So I'm gonna get set up. Alrighty, let's get started. I already went ahead and marked the resistors. I used my benchtop multimeter. So, and then I wrote down the value on there. And there are two little ones that are separate. We we'll start off with a 10K resistors, populate the circuit board, and then I'm gonna solder them in. And then I'm gonna work my way through. Oh, well, I only got two in, but I wanted to show you this. I always make sure that they are in, in the exact same order. Not one this way and one that way. Just to keep my friend Joe from Atlanta happy. Hi Joe. Up next are the ceramic uh, capacitors. Need to come in. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And they have the value written on them. And it's also neatly printed over here in this corner. The camera wants to focus on the top there. You can see on the left top corner they're 104, 104 farad. It is the following day, I have the majority of the LEDs in, I only have to put in the last row and I will give you some tips because it can be a bit tricky to get all 132 LEDs in straight, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's real hard. So what I do, I start by populating the row from the upside, so I'm gonna do that first. I put them in all the way to the bottom. I keep my finger on top of it, and then oh, hopefully they don't drop out. The last one did drop out. So keep my finger on top of it, and then put it on the workbench. Wiggle it a bit so they all slide in, so that they bottom out. In principle. Now the first thing that I do, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit over here. Sorry, zooming is the other way. And just tack one lead in, just very lightly. I'm going just in and out so they just stick in. It doesn't matter if they're in crooked or not deep enough. That's not the point. So they're in. And it's not important as you can see. Most of them are, they are crooked and they protrude a little bit too much. So what I do is turn it around and put my finger, sorry, put it this way around. So I start from the top. So this lead here uh, is soldered in, is tacked in, so put my finger on the top and heat up the joint and then push it in so it, so it bottoms out. The camera wants to focus, so it's this top one, so it bottoms out. And I'm going to repeat that for all the other LEDs in the row. Now I just align them, because once the, both leads are soldered, you have only a little bit of wiggle room in this direction and not that and that direction. So let me zoom out again. Zooming out the other way, Arnold. Anyway, I'm going to straighten out this line. And by the way, if they're not perfectly aligned, these LEDs are so bright and they have a, a diverging lens in there, so you don't really see if they are not perfectly aligned. You could also use a ruler, a steel uh, ruler, to straighten them out, but I'm happy with the way they go in. So now I turn it over once again and I'm gonna solder in the, the other lead. And that's the last one. <laughs> and I said, don't mind the fumes, I usually use an, uh, an extractor to get rid of the fumes. So 
that looks look all too bad. I'm gonna cut off the leads. So I do that having this little magnet at hand and then uh, cut the leads. And what often happens is that my little cutter gets magnetized. So I use this magnetized demagnetizing thingy. Just yeah, move it through, hoping to get rid of the magnetism. So if I cut off the lead, it jumps or is attracted by the magnet. Well, that means that all components are now soldered on. So the next thing to do is install the ICs. Let's see if everything is the way it should. Well, one thing that I'm going to do before I um, install the ICs is I'm going to go over all the joints. And that's the last one. I'll clean up my soldering iron. Now let's install the ICs and uh, see if this thing will work. Start off by the big one. Look at the orientation. As I said, there's a little notch on one side of the IC that's also marked on the circuit board. And the slot goes in. I have to push in the legs a little bit. So, finally got it aligned. Push it in all the way. Yes, all the legs are in. And that chip is in too. Well, now we can go and test it. So let me get a power supply. See if this cable will make it all the way to my desk or my workbench. Hmm. Is there a little push button? Oh yeah, I can adjust the sensitivity. Hello! Hey, yeah, seems to be doing some kind of test. Now you can see that the alignment is a little bit off. Or there's so much glare. If I put this out, is that better? Or put this one out? Yeah, that's much of an improvement. Hello. Yeah, I have to adjust the sensitivity. For that, I have to use a little trim pod on the back. Um, well, it seems to be working. I only wish that the sensitivity was a little bit better. Elf tot 13 graden in het oosten. Het volgt wat kouder aan door de matige noordwesten wind. En vanavond is het nog helder. Komende nacht neemt de bewolking toe en volgt wat regen. So we now know that it's working. Uh, I have built another one that is much faster to respond so I'm gonna read through the manual the the building instructions to see if we have to make other adjustments so I'm gonna do that first and then we can start assembling the housing and well finish off this uh, nice fun little project well here it is in its casing it's a nice little acrylic box so now we have a finished spectrum analyzer I have to think a little bit with the settings and I've been looking for a manual but I haven't been able to find um, yeah any good operating instructions for this very chip I can find spec sheets that contain 800 what 700 pages of uh, uh, yeah specifications for this chip uh, for the, and it's all its varieties by the way but anyway it's alive and now I have something neat to give to my little nephew. I will tinker a little bit with the settings, but I need a little pin because the, the little button over here is a bit hidden right, right now. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to tinker around with the settings. And uh, once I figure out what it is, I'll uh, put on some music so you can see uh, how this thing works in reality. Anyway, that's uh, it for now. If I do find any more details on the settings, uh, manual something, I will put it up in the description box. For now, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye! In totaal, dit zijn ze vanaf 7 minuten of met een bijzondere oorzaak. A4 Den Haag, Amsterdam voor de Nieuwe Meer 11 minuten en de A10 Watergraafsmeer de Nieuwe Meer voor de Rozenoordbrug 7. A12 Oberhausen Arnhem voor Duiven 9 minuten en de A8.